Hey guys, this is Zach. I hope everyone is having a great day. Today's video is actually a cross upload of content that originally appeared over on my second channel, X2. It's related to capital ship tactics within the video game Empire at War, so I thought a lot of you guys would appreciate that. And if you do, consider checking the second channel and subscribing. We upload almost daily, we have nearly daily streams as well, and the community is just amazing. We do Empire at War and also other video games. Tonight we'll be doing a drunk Sea of Thieves. It will be super fun. So if you guys are interested, I encourage you to check out the link. I would really love to reach 100,000 subs by the end of the year. We're still very far off, so I'd appreciate any help you guys could offer. The channel is run not only by me, but by my friend Charlie, who many of you guys know. He works full time on the channel, and also Corey from Corey Loses and Corey's Datapad is a contributor. So if you got a second to help me out, I would really appreciate it. But either way, let's roll the intro. Empire at War, especially modded Empire at War, can be very difficult. This is especially true for the mod we're playing today, Thrawn's Revenge, which as you can see has a cruel AI mode. This gives the AI a variety of bonuses and basically allows them to cheat even more than they do already. As a player, you need to be very creative to secure victories because you will often be facing off against much larger fleets. Today we'll be talking about one strategy in particular that you can take advantage of as a player to beat back the enemy and win battles you wouldn't ordinarily be able to win. With that being said, let's get into a battle and take a look at what I'm talking about here. Okay, so the most important part of this strategy really, and this is important especially for new Empire War players, is setting a Wayfinder or a Scout Unit. Basically how this works, and I know this will be really redundant to many of you, is this first unit that's in this slot right here is the one that comes out on the battlefield. I'll show you guys what happens if you don't set a wayfinder. Enemy forces ahead. You can see here that the whole fleet just came out of hyperspace. We can't choose where our ships come in. And unfortunately, we are facing off against a very large Imperial fleet. So right now, basically, we are screwed. The Empire is going to be able to come in and just straight up outgun us. Even with the strategy we're talking about today, we may not be able to beat this fleet, but we might be able to do some serious damage to it while minimizing losses on our end. So let's go ahead and reload the save. All right, we're back. So the Empire gave us a nice opportunity. It attacked Typhara with a fairly large fleet, especially large compared to what we have right now. This fleet has a population of about 200. I think 212 was the exact numbers. Ours will come at at around 150. And there's this very firepower heavy. They've got uh, three IST-1s. These might be Tectors. Three IST-1s, uh, four victories. Oh, another IST-1 down here. So they've got like eight Star Destroyers of various size, plus support ships. We have really, um, most of our firepower is locked up in this one big Mon Calamari cruiser and some smaller support ships. So, if we fight this fleet head-on, we are going to lose. It's not even going to be close. So, we need to take advantage of the AI. We need to use our limited resources to their utmost effectiveness. There's no way we can stand down a full barrage from this very powerful fleet. So, let's take advantage. The key to this is understanding how the AI is going to react to the threat that you pose it. We need to split these ships up, and one way we can do this in some battles is by just sending in your scout ship, kind of having the enemy turn around. But because of how close they are to the spawn, that's not really going to work well in this situation. Let's jump in this assault frigate. Now, I might have jumped it in a little close, but it should still work. It's not a super valuable ship. Mm, yeah, maybe a little too close. Let's see if it survives. Looks like it's going to. So, the goal of what we're trying to do here, this is a sacrificial lamb. This ship, it can go. It's going to have to go. Same to, uh... I think... Oh, yeah. So, the, the uh, Corellian gunship is already dead. What we're trying to do here is break this fleet up. We want to get the ships away from the other ones. We want to kind of find a few Star Destroyers that are separated. And we want to pounce on them with everything we have. And the way you can really get the most out of your money here 
is by having the ships turned away from you. These Star Destroyers will be having very few guns pointed in this direction. And you'll notice when we call in capital ships, they're facing this way. Their guns are going to be most effective in a firing arc kind of this way. So let me just cancel that spawn. Um, and there's no way you can change it. You can't rotate a ship's uh, entry trajectory. So we want them turned around. You notice too, we're calling off the fighters, which is nice. We've got a few uh, stragglers back here. Let's just let these ships get a little further out. This assault frigate's doing its job, despite my uh, poor commanding there. And I think it's time to spring the trap. So we are going to call in all of our fleet. I'm calling the fighters too. Let's get the big ships in first. We'll call in the support ships just for some extra firepower. Call in this Dauntless. We're going to call them in very tightly. We want all of their guns firing on one ship or two ships. And we just want to start crushing their ranks, basically. You can see how quickly we're taking down this Victory Star Destroyer. Get these Nebulon Bs in. And the effect of this is not only that we get that surprise attack, but also that the fleet's just in complete disarray now. We'll send our uh, bombers after this one Star Destroyer. It's got all of its fighter cover is chasing this capital ship. They're trying to get back here, but it's going to take them a while. Okay, so the assault frigate's done, but that's okay. We've got all of our ships packed nicely. The uh, Mon Calamari cruiser, the big MC-80, is taking most of the damage. This also works really well with carriers. Um, if you're fading, facing a very carrier-heavy fleet, which this one is not, these things are very squishy. They'll die super quickly. Um, so just get them away from the rest of the fleet. Let's get our bombers in. Get them away from the rest of the fleet. You can take them out really quickly. Hyperspace jump away. It's no problem. So one victory's down. This ISD-2, or sorry, ISD-1 has its shields down. And this victory Star Destroyer should get pummeled by our fleet as well. And now we've also got our A-Wings in reserve, so we can send those out. But what's nice, really, is that they're coming at us one by one. But they're facing all of us together. Let's move some of these support ships up, because I don't think we're getting full firepower in. I'll call in Rogue Squadron, just for the extra... I think they give a bonus to Starfighters, I don't know. But yeah, there's another victory going down here. We can retreat at any time. All of our ships are still very healthy. I'm getting a little worried about these Star Destroyers coming in, but it's still probably okay. Let's go ahead and send our Y-Wings on this ISD. We'll send our X-Wings on the ISD as well. Just for some extra support. But it looks like we might win this one pretty cl pretty cleanly, despite, of course, the loss we took um, on those initial two ships. And had I managed the Assault Frigate better and it hadn't died, this battle would be going even better for me. And there's another ship down. That victory took a lot of heat. Let's just put all of our... I don't want anyone to move, but let's put a bunch of fire on that Star Destroyer. So we've got a hero here, Sien Sov. Just as things start to get a bit dicier, I'm going to move him back behind the uh, big Mon Calamari cruiser, which itself is still doing okay. But if we can get through this Star Destroyer, we should be able to win this battle and finish off pretty much everything. Get Sien Sov out of there if we can. Let's move this victory up. There, let's move this up. These uh, support vessels can take out the hard points on the ISD now. Sansov is doing fine. His shields are regening. So yeah, we just broke that Star Destroyer. That one's not in a great position either. Probably put the two Dauntlesses on this. Just some weirdness of the AI there. Let's move this uh, Liberty to help out over there. This one's running. Again, any of these ships running is awesome as well, because it takes even the few guns they have left out of the fight. Uh, 
So the it's getting a little dicey with the home one. It's got no uh, engines left though, so we're gonna stay and fight. I think we'll be okay. The enemy's damage output is gonna start really dropping off here soon. Just take out this victory. So the thing here is not only are we winning, but so far we're winning with relatively few losses. Uh, ship losses, I should say. Here, send you guys after that. The home one's doing fine. Get the shields back up. That's exactly what we want. Things are looking good. And they're trying to run. So let's... The good thing is, too, we got them so quickly, we've taken out all of their engines, and this is going to be a successful battle. Let's just check the uh, score to see exactly what we lost. I think maybe one of those MC-40s, a couple of uh, scout ships we set in. But besides that, not even. So we lost... A gunship and a frigate, we took out four Star Destroyers, three Strike Cruisers, some Carriers, and then four Victories. That's pretty good. Let's try it again, though. Alright guys, I thought we'd do a second battle. I want to get into it really quickly, but I will show you the fleet composition first off. Um, on paper, we actually have more numbers than they do. We've got 258 units versus their 221. However, we've got only one ship larger than a Liberty, which is basically like a Victory Star Destroyer in size. They've got a total of three Star Destroyers, including uh, three Imperial Star Destroyers, including Teradoc, who is a Tier 2 commander, which is pretty significant, and then also two Secutors, which are like carrier battleships. Um, as I said, we've got the... Uh, we've got the Home 1 type, but besides that, really just whatever we had so hopefully we can put this together, get a win, and to keep things interesting, I'm going to try to keep our total units under 200. Because we do have that um, unit advantage in numbers, so I don't want to, uh, you know, make the strategy look bad by being cheap. So there's a few things I wanted to talk about. One is fleet composition and what fleets work for this kind of uh, strategy. You need to have a mix of ships that can absorb damage because eventually the AI will stop um, and turn around and face you kind of um, more traditionally. So you do need to be able to slug it out with them. But it's also really good to have some ships that, even if weaker, can put out a lot of damage quickly. So I'm thinking of something like a Victory Star Destroyer. Or a really good example would be something like a Bothan Assault Cruiser. Um, they can put out lots of damage. They can't take a lot of damage, but they can really get their shots in in those 30 seconds or so where the AI is completely out of position, if that makes any sense. So the Dreadnought, you also have to kind of play a little game when it comes to how you aggro the enemy, how you get their attention. Um, you need to have, you need to drop in close enough to them, um, but not too close that you end up here, let's pull that off. Not too close that you end up having your ship die immediately. So that's what I struggled with last episode, or sorry, last battle, and that's kind of where my mistake came in. Right now the AI is not going for it. Station behavior also makes things a little weird. I think once I blow this up, the AI might be a little more interested. I'll just call down. See, like right there. I had to kind of get them interested but not lose the ship. But these ultimately are sacrificial lambs. I don't care if I lose a Dreadnought. Every single ship in this fleet was a free one. So I think it kind of well illustrates. Because um, this is a situation you'll be dealing with. Whether you're playing as the New Republic or if you're just playing on Cruel AI. There will be cases where the AI has these crazy fleets that you're expected to go against. With basically like a stick and a piece of yarn. Um, so I'm just looking at what we have here. I think... It, I'm gonna wait a second until the AI is a little more out of position, and then I might pounce on Teradoc because taking that tier two command out really quickly would be nice. And then we're also close enough to that ISD that we should be able to get some nice damage. Um, I'm gonna save these assault frigates for something special later, and you guys will see why. But for now, let's call in our Mon Calamari cruisers, including these ones. save space for those uh okay we just lost our dreadnought 
Yeah, we're we're going right for the shields on this thing. Probably could have put that Liberty up a bit further, but that's okay. Get our Quasars out. Because their fighters are a mess. Take out that engine so he can't get too far. There we go. We're also taking out their uh, carriers there. Unfortunately, that those other Star Destroyers completely bugged away. But they're gonna be they're gonna be really unorganized or disorganized in how they respond to this, which is really the key. And we haven't even called in all our ships yet. All right, let's get you guys back towards the fleet. Let's get you guys in position. Let's get the X-wings and the bombers up on the next up star destroyer, which will probably be the secular. All right, just chill. You do have to use a lot more micromanaging when it's small ships like this. If I just had three Home 1 uh, MC-80s, you know, I wouldn't really have to worry about it so much, but these things can die if a Star Destroyer looks at them for too long. So let's just bring them back. Let's, uh... I'm purposefully saving units. So this is exactly what I wanted to see, though. Even though we only managed to get one in that surprise attack, you know, they're completely out of position, which is nice. So these ships are doing nothing. They're not being fired upon shore. We didn't get them in a super weak point, but they're not making a difference, which is just as helpful. So I still have lots of ship room. Um, what I'm thinking about doing is you can essentially use assault frigates it is a bit of a risk. Normally in a battle I wouldn't do this, but because I want to show you guys how it works, I will. Knowing that we could lose them. Um, basically, Assault Frigates sort of work. You can use them like another version, basically, of... Uh, we can do this with any ship, really. I just like it with Assault Frigates. It's basically just doing the initial strategy again. So they're going to come out of hyperspace. The, uh, the Secular is already not a super... Uh, Offensively gifted ship, so we'll just pound away at the shields. I don't know how strong these ships are now with uh, the new balance changes, but I guess we'll—I guess we're about to see. All right, the shield up, shields up, and the good thing is the assault frigates can move, so they can stay behind the enemy, and they're distracting that star destroyer. Again, normally I wouldn't have done this in the battle. We might lose this entire kind of wolf pack here, but... We're taking down that Secutor. That Star Destroyer is dying, so... Yeah, we're really not doing much damage. It is also hard for me just to kind of know how ships are balanced after the balance changes too, so that does kind of affect things, but... Get these guys back. I'll probably get comments to, um, I meant to address this as well earlier. Some people consider this to be cheating. I don't at all, especially when you're playing with cruel AI. Uh, this is something Cory kind of enlightened me to. Because you are taking advantage of kind of the, uh, weirdness of how the AI works. But, the AI at this point, when you're playing with cruel AI, is also blatantly cheating itself. If that makes sense. Uh, can I draw fire? No, we're gonna lose this liberty, which kind of sucks. But... Let's send you guys over to help. You over to help. Oh, we can probably send everybody over to help at this point. It was nice, too, that we kept that secular out of the greater battle over there. But losing that liberty does hurt. I would have liked to have kept that, obviously. But yeah, these ships did pretty well over here. And then... Now the, uh, liberties and the other Monkel cruisers are kind of running up on them. They've got no, uh, shields, so... Just taking out the cannons, protecting them. Move this Liberty, which is a little weak, to the rear of the ship. And yeah. This thing will be dead in a minute. And then all is left at the space station. Attack. 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 
Um, let's just make sure we get all the hard points done. Yep. So guys, this is the general strategy. Um, you can call it the Ek Pincer. You can call it basic Imperial or Empire War strategy that you guys should know about. Um, <laughs> just to reiterate the key uh, ideas, you gotta have some disposable ships in your fleet. Um, it's it's all about getting the AI out of position, taking advantage of that. Also, out of position not only so you can inflict massive damage, but just so ships can't be fighting. If you just call in your ships there and sit, then let's look at what we lost. So nothing. The Liberty hurts. But other than that, not bad. The uh, carrier loss was preventable for sure. Um, so it's not only about inflicting massive damage on ships as you have them, but also just as importantly, getting enemy capital ships out of the battle. Um, a good mix of powerful capital ships and um, damaging capital ships is good, but I think I showed in this video that you can use really whatever you have around. Like, this is not a strong fleet. We are fighting against very good Imperial ships. Um, if you can capture Imperial Star Destroyers or Victories, those work very, very well for this. But that's all I have for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought of this strategy video down in the comments and what you'd like to see next. That's all I have for you guys this time. But until next one, have a good day and may the force be with you.